In the early game of Patron, you are going to be spending pretty much all of your time gathering enough food and other basic resources for your people. This experience is not unlike hosting your in-laws for a holiday and is not at all what you are looking to get out of your gaming time. Follow this guide and you can make sure you're not spending any more effort than you have to to gather enough food for your people. I see food production in the game divided into three distinct eras. In the early game, we don't have any of the agricultural options unlocked. In the mid game, we get fields, orchards, and ranches. And the end game of food production is when we have mills and bakeries made available. We're going to look at the early game first, and we're going to throw away the YouTube convention of saving the best for last. You guys came here for a food gathering guide. I have two words for you. Fisherman's Hut. All hail King Salmon! Important to note, we are recording this on update 4, and as of 48 hours ago in update 3, the Fisherman's Hut got buffed. My gosh, the developers' constant updates to this game are almost giving me anxiety, but their willingness to immediately fix problems that they find in the game is great. I love it, and it is way better than a bunch of other games that I know of. I feel like the CEO over at Overseer Games was in a meeting with the game developers. They were talking about balancing the food economy, and he thought they were talking about where they wanted to go for lunch. He threw out there that he likes seafood, and then the game developers decided to buff the Fisherman's Hut and remove the wood upkeep costs that it used to have, giving us the majestically overpowered fish-making machine that we have right now. I mean, look at this, 816 fish per worker per year for only 240 coins. Now that's 60 coins a worker, this is incredible. The only other place that you can get seafood at a deal like that is Long John Silver's, and I feel greasier just mentioning that. I do want to say here that I'm going to be comparing numbers of things with food production on. This is a way that you get a boost to, obviously, your food production opportunities, and I think that is an excellent decree to have running to be able to limit your workforce that you are in investing into food. I'm used to just having it on on most of these saves, so I'm going to be comparing numbers always with that boost taken into account. Honorable mention has to go to the gatherer's shelter over here. If you give it full upgrades, and because it costs no upkeep whatsoever, it is going to be able to get you through the first two years of your colony without you even having to think. Now, later on, it is definitely going to get outpaced in terms of food production, but because it is so cost-effective and cheap, it is perfect for the early game. This means that in the early game, the odd man out is the hunting lodge here. Not to say that it is a bad building, it is totally fine. It's just that looking at it from a lens of only the early game, it actually gets pretty expensive to tack on all of these little upgrades here. Its upkeep is kind of steep, especially because your iron production is going to be expensive to kind of expand into that industry, and then its production is split between between venison and leather. Now leather makes an excellent trade good and will ultimately feed into luxury production later on, but it is holding it back in terms of just raw food production. Entering the mid game here, we have farms, orchards, and ranches who are all food producing contenders coming for the Fisherman's Crown. Do any of them manage to win the obesity wars? Well, let's see what we've got. I do need to tag on here that this save is running the essentials good policy as well, which is boosting the Fisherman's Hut all the way up to 891 fish per worker per year, putting the benchmark of what needs to be set up to be able to take it down at 900 units of food. There are no other policies that are going to be able to impact the farming food production. There are different things here, like you could enact something out of social here, food restrictions, to keep your people from eating as much, but I don't recommend this because this is going to be taking down your people's health as well. Orchards take about a year for the trees to mature before you get full yield, and then they have an excellent yield per worker. On the downside, they are rather expensive to upkeep, both in terms of coins expended and also the space that they require. Now, orchards are important for creating the alcoholic beverages that will keep your higher class citizens from wanting to riot. Is creating social stability really just this easy? So you will be working orchards into your economy, but don't try making fruit the staple of your people's diet. Farm fields are incredibly versatile with an enormous range of what you can plant inside of them, and some of these options do compete with the orchards in terms of their raw yield, even though they are coming from smaller farm fields and cost you less. The Fisherman's Shack holds off all but the very highest yield crop field option, which as far as I am aware is the Sunflower. 
and I am pretty sure that this is being treated as an edible commodity and not just a luxury uh, division of the flowers for the peasants because there is a designated crop field of just flowers that has a much lower yield that you get as well. Now, sunflowers are being pulled away into the oil mills, which is a cornerstone foundation for a couple other of the high-end economies. So there is competition there, but the sunflower's production of 1,008 units of food her year is pretty incredible. As an aside here, there is a whole set of secret seed types that are only available through an end game event where you buy the new seed types from a traveling trader. Some of these are not going to do very well for you, whereas others are going to have a pretty good yield and the corn is going to be incredible. I have actually not unlocked the potato yet, which could be the secret king of the farm fields, but I really don't think so. All in all, you want to be planting the most high yield crops that you can find. There is a lot of variety here just so that you can diversify your villagers diet and so that you can turn this into a farming simulator game if you so choose. The wider the villagers diet, then the healthier they are going to be, but as long as they at least have some variety variety then they are going to be plenty healthy and there is a lot of different options even choosing from only the high yield field types. As a final note, there is a crop rotation mechanic that is implemented in the game, but right now it is tuned down to be so low that it's not meaningful. However, the devs said that they are going to buff this feature in a future update. Hopefully with that update, they give you the option to set two crops that the field will automatically rotate between. Otherwise, when you get to have a larger farming operation, it is going to require a lot of micromanagement to have to be switching your fields to be able to keep their efficiency or maybe their fertility high. I believe what the crop rotation number is going to do is it's going to impact this fertility number on the crop fields. So we've had the sunflowers just barely edge out the fisherman's hut by a hair. Are the ranches going to shake things up anymore? Let's see what we've got. We have four different animal types, chickens, sheep, pigs, and cows. All of these are going to cost oats for upkeep to feed the animals, and they are all going to produce meat as well as a byproduct, unless you are the pigs, in which case your byproduct is just more meat. The chickens are a cheap upkeep option, but already you can see that these ranches are going to be a major player in terms of food production. Sheep are a great source of mutton, but the main reason that you are going to be building these is for wool to serve as candle wicks out of your candle makers. Cows offer you an alternative source of leather to just the Huntsman's Lodge, and so they are useful for clothes production, also giving you milk and beef. Now this just leaves us with the pigs, and I hope you're holding on to something because these guys are insane when they consolidate all into just the production of pork. The porkers are absolutely the best. Look at this. Almost 3,000 production from this single ranch. Even if you factor in that you have to have a potentially designated farmer working oats. Now, an oat farm, if I can bring one up here, its production is going to be enough to have oats left over so you can kind of have an oat farm supporting two different ranches. But even if you have two workers working here, I've seen this number reach as high as 4,000. It is not replicating itself here, and I will go into the nuances of the ranches in a second, but these numbers are absolutely incredible, and they blow away what we were looking at for both the fields and the fishermen's side. So does this mean that the ranches win outright? Well, choosing between bacon and seafood is a decision that is hard for me in real life, and there is also nuance to it here in Patron. This is because the ranches follow the natural life cycle of the animals that is keeping in its herd. They are going to fluctuate back and forth between half of their production and all the way up to full. Once they reach full, then the adult population will be culled for food and they will then allow the animal's natural reproduction to bring the herd back up to full size. And here we're seeing it three and a half thousand just uh, like one month later. The numbers here are all over the place and it's really hard to track how much you are actually going to be pulling out of this ranch. You have the option to really skyrocket your food production here by buying extra adult animals to always keep the herd at full size. The downside is that when you start having a lot of ranches that is going to get very expensive and it is going to be especially expensive in terms of micromanagement, so I really don't recommend doing that. 
that. Allowing the ranches to run on just the natural replenishment from the animals is going to keep their production curbed down quite a bit, though as you can see you are still going to be pulling a lot of food out of these guys. It is also important to note that these do not care about the soil quality that they are built on, um, whereas the orchards and the fields are going to. So you're going to want to find the fertile soil zones to be able to put your farmland in, but you can put your ranches wherever you want. One of the crazy things is that even between the ranches, how much pork you are getting per animal fluctuates. We had 72 on the last one, 73 over here, and then at this King Ranch, we are getting 103, or at least that's what the game thinks. Hopefully, things get kind of evened out or fully explained in another dev update where they're going to uh, be looking at the ranches and allowing us to have a better gauge on what these are really producing. Now that you know that the two best food producers are fish and pigs, should you build those exclusively? Well, no. The answer is that the greater the food variety available to your villagers, the healthier they are going to be. While I knew plenty of people back in college who seemed to survive just fine on the single food that they considered edible at the dining hall, which was pizza with extra grease painted on top as soon as it came out of the oven, by the way, your villagers and patron are not going to do nearly as well. They need to have multiple different types of food available to them to be able to keep their health stat available right here below the happiness number high. What you can do with the information from this guide is make these high yield producers the staples of your diet and then hopefully be able to free up some of your workers to be able to push them into other lines of work. You may have noticed that at the beginning of the video I said that bread production was considered the end game of food production here in Patron, but then I never mentioned it again in the video. Well, this is because it is an absolute scam. I am working on a whole video breaking down why that supply chain is completely broken be on the lookout for it, or if I have already produced it, it'll be linked in a card in the corner. Thanks for watching, and don't starve out there, guys.